Hi guys, this is part four of the Asteroids tutorial and we're going to build the two uh, top results um, which were particle effects and the main menu. So far we've got this Asteroids game that you can get from GitHub um, if you haven't followed the previous three um, parts. And that's what we've got so far. So today we're adding two more things, which are particle effects and the uh, main menu. We are using Java 11 and everything else should be set up as needed in this repository. So to add particle effect for, let's go with an explosion. Yeah, to add particle effect, what you do is create an emitter, which you can find from particle emitters, which is kind of pre-built collection of them. Let's go with explosion. This is the radius, how far the explosion goes. And then you just set various properties, configuration, if you will. You can change the number of emissions to just one, because we don't want it to loop. And let's just do this and then see um, what happens. In order to attach it, to attach the emitter to an entity, you create a particle component. So as you know, we are following the entity component uh, model in FXGL. There is no system, it's just entity and components. So when something explodes, there should be particle explosion as well. That's a bit big. Also not centered correctly. Yeah, it's probably centering on the position of the explosion. <clears throat> and the explosion is offset by a certain amount. So we'll have to offset our um, emitter to set spawn point function. So I is the index of each particle. And we're saying that each particle needs to be offset by this value. At the same time, I also want to reduce the size of particles. Let's go to, to 10. So there will be a random value between two and 10. No, that's too far with respect to the offset, but the size looks fine. It's probably half of that. I also want to change the color. <clears throat> let's go with, um, yeah, let's go with white for start color and blue for end color. As you can see, this is not the exact science, and you basically change the configuration to see which com combination of values works best. I think the blue explosion is kind of odd. Looks cool, but I think in this context, it's a bit odd. But I guess it does make sense if you think about the laser um, color, which kind of bluish. It's almost like a laser um, beam being exploded. Anyway, I'm going to leave this at that. You can play around with these um, color values as well as other things. You can see there's a bunch of things you can set. Um, you can change the num number of particles as well. You can also set the source image, which will use that image as a single particle, which is quite interesting. Right, so that's the particle effect thing done. Um, let's go with the main menu. I'm going to call my menu Asteroids main menu since the game of the game. And the name of the game is Asteroids. We're going to extend a menu and we're going to implement some stuff. 
the ID should be able to help you. Right, there's a lot of stuff. Um, well, first of all, I don't need these things. I'm just going to equip them. Some of this is probably going to change. So I'm not too sure about this API, where it's going to stick around. It's been a while since I updated the FXGL menu API. So that might change. Um, so don't want, don't worry too much about overriding these things. I'm going to return something meaningful um, so it doesn't crash. But apart from that, I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to show you how to um, add your own stuff to the menu, which uh, will not change because that follows the JavaFX API and I quite like that. So in order to add something, you do get menu content root. As you can see, there are multiple routes available. These are for internal purposes. And the, I would say 99% of use cases will just use menu content root. This is basically like extending a parent or some kind of a node and accessing its children. So you can add some stuff like new button, uh, hello, for example. Uh, and that API won't change. Anything below, so all of these overrides, um, don't worry too much about them. You might want to write this one though, um, create background. Uh, let's just give it a simple rectangle. What are these values? Width and height. That's strange. Um, it can access the source code and the documentation, but I can't parse those as names or variables. I'm pretty sure I didn't name things like S or string binding. <clears throat> right, so that's, let's give it a color. Um, dark, dark gray. The menu type, we don't need to take this as a menu type because we know this is main menu. I'm not going to change the game menu, um, but you can do that. So just create another one of those, call it game menu, and then set the type as game menu. So we've just added this button as far as we're concerned, and let's see how this runs. So in order to um, provide your own menu, you need to first enable the menu, and then you need to set your scene factory. <clears throat> and you can override something like new uh, well you can override all of these which means you can pretty much customize the entire FXGL um, look but we're going to change just this one which is the main menu I'm going to return our main menu All right, let's see this run. Now that we enabled the menus, the first thing you see should be a menu, which is what we've just done. And there's a button that says hello, that doesn't do anything. And yeah, let's just design a single button, make it create, uh, make it enter new game. And I think that should be um, enough to then generalize this for um, the full main menu. Let's create our own button. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to call this my button. Actually, let's call it something different. Asteroid button, how about that? Extends parent. Or perhaps stack pane, I don't know. And it will take, um, I guess, two things the name and some action 
to perform when the button is clicked. So suppose that's implemented. Start new game. And um, the thing to call is Yeah, you can see that by overriding, by extending FXGL menu, you get a bunch of methods you can call. And these are wired into the FXGL um, lifecycle. So you can call new game, resume, save, etc. So all the things that you can do with the standard uh, menu. And currently we want to fire a new game. Or if you're into method references, then just shorten this to that. So that's how I would use my button. And I would probably want to center it possibly. Um, translate X to get width over two, minus the size of the button. I don't know what that is. So that, that will do generally. As to the actual look of the button, uh, so what do we need? Uh, let's create a rectangle. This is going to be our background. Rectangle. Size, uh, you ideally want to, actually I don't know whether you want to have a fixed size or you want to base the size on the name and um, length. Well, let's do this. Fill, um, I don't know, maybe. Color black and then set the stroke color as well. Something like white. So that's my background for the button. <clears throat> and then we need um, the actual text, which actually we can use a UI factory for. I think so. New text, name, um, color, black. No, wait, uh, this is a black background, so color white then. And size 24. Is probably big. Let's go with 18. So add all and then background and then text. We'll just see how this looks and then we'll change as needed. Right. Why is it not centered? That's interesting. I've changed the translate and all of this stuff. Oh, uh, probably get width return zero. Should I be using something like get application width? And then get application height. So that's that. Um, let's just run this. Yeah, that's better. So this is kind of like a button. It probably needed to be lengthier. Let's go with 40. And I want to have really cool effect uh, when it's being hovered. So I want the fill to change to white and the text to change to black when it's being hovered over. Um, yeah, bindings. When hover property then color white, otherwise color black, in which case we don't even need to set this here. And we can do something very similar with text fill color. But we just inverse these so that it's readable. Let's try that. Yeah. See, 
it gives you an indication that you're hovering over the button. Uh, and then we should be able to press and do something with it. Since it's 200 by 40, this needs to be 200 over 2, minus 40 over 2 to keep it centered. Um, and then set on mouse clicked is a thing before we forget. So it actually does something. Um, I don't know if I want to add anything more to it. I don't want to make it too complex. So I have a button. I'm going to hover with the cursor. And we can press to start the new game. So that's our simplistic main menu uh, complete. And in a very similar way, so that's the um, that's the stock game menu. You can see that there are various effects being applied here. And in a very similar way, you can also kind of customize your own main menu um, in a way that we did just now. So if we go back to main menu, then we can see our menu. You might want to add something similar like um, exit options, etc. Right, so in this tutorial, we talked about creating um, and using particle effects. The thing of note is the particle component. This is what you use to attach your um, particle effects to a particular entity. The entity itself need not have a view, in which case the only thing you will see is the particle effect. And we also looked at how to customize your own menus in FXGL. So you can extend that and you set the type, and then you use the menu content root to do your stuff. Most of this will probably go and um, we'll see what the API will look like in the end. Okay, thanks for watching.